So Gregory and I are talking about setting up a webinar registration. And I'll just, you know, the simple, I'll just share the simplest way that I do it is through Acuity Scheduling, which is my software. Um, if you have another scheduling software, such as Calendly, you might be able to do that as well. But in Acuity, Gregory, do you have Acuity or, or something I don't, else? I haven't thus far used either. Okay. I, I don't have a scheduling, scheduling software. Well, now, now might be the time then. So in Acuity, uh, I'm going to share my screen. There's a place called appointment types. And then this is where you click on new group, new type of group class. And so Gregory's awesome webinar. Okay. And then duration, you know, whatever, 60 minutes. The duration is for the person signing up to know how long it is. And it'll show up with that duration on their calendar. So that duration is important, of course. Uh, longer description here is um, it shows up on that Acuity signup page. Uh, in this webinar, we'll cover, it, it's not even that long, it's been only 500 characters. We'll cover blah, 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 blah. You can't even say that much, but, and then show a message after scheduling. This is the, this is message shown on confirmation page is the, um, is what shows up in the, in their Google calendar or iCal description. Uh, but it also shows up after they click you know, sign up and then it'll, it'll show on the confirmation page. So it might be the Zoom link, um, you know, what to prepare or, or anything like that. And then price, you know, depending on you know, if you're doing a free webinar, obviously price is zero. Ignore the category. I don't usually use that. Uh, picture, you know, I don't usually use the picture, but if you have a nice picture for the webinar, um, you might do that. Public, I think is fine. Class group or event, you want to keep this checked. Maximum number of people, let's just say uh, 100 or, or whatever, as that's for Zoom. It's 100. I click on create appointment type. And once I've done that, then uh, it'll say offer class. I can either click offer class here. I don't know why they have multiple places. There's here, there's here, and there's also, you could do it down here. It's all the same thing, but for, for, it will always be available down here. These top ones aren't usually available because after you visit it the second or third time on this page, these won't be here. But anyway, I click on offer class down here. And, and then this is where I put the actual date and time on the webinar. So let's say it was, um, it was uh, you know, March, March 1st or, or let's say February. Uh, by the way, sometimes when you, when you click on the offer, this, this, this you know, kind of this dropdown menu shows up and it's really, um, you just might have to click away and click on the dropdown menu and then click the arrow back and forth to get rid of it. That's a little trick I found. Uh, and just whatever, let's say, let's say February 16th and what time is it in your time zone? What time is it? Because uh, Acuity Scheduling will automatically translate the time to their time zone based on their computer cookie. Um, so let's say 9 a.m. or whatever. Click on Save Class. And voila, there it is, 9 a.m. Wednesday and again, Pacific, Pacific time. And then uh, basically now what you have to do is click on Direct Scheduling link on the right-hand side and then uh, click Copy. And then this is what you can paste in an email or in whatever, um, uh, just show you what it looks like. So let's say I'm writing an email. I can just click, I could paste it. And then when people go there, you know, um, it will look like this. In this webinar, we covered blah, 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 blah. Gregory's awesome webinar, sign up. Now you can also hide how many spots are left. That's in the acuity settings. You can hide that if you want, but um, it does need to have a maximum number of people that can attend, I think. So um, there you go. So helpful? Yeah, that was extremely helpful. What will be the easiest way to get to this recording? Oh, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, no worries. Thank yeah. you so much. And, and uh, of course, once people sign up, um, the other thing you should be doing, uh, once you set up this webinar, before you promote it, the other thing you should do, give me one moment here and pause the recording here, is uh, go, go back to, to the home screen and then scroll down to client email. This is important, client email. Oops, client email, there we are. And here and under client email, you wanna search, click on select and search your, your webinar, Gregory's awesome webinar, click on it. And then uh, you, you wanna make sure that you adjust the confirmation. This is, you see on the left-hand side, you see the confirmation, the, the emails. There's the initial confirmation and then there's the reminders. And then I, I definitely would recommend adjusting initial confirmation reminders and follow-ups. Those three for sure. Cancellation is also optional as well. But initial confirmation, I have found the webinar. Let's see, Gregory's awesome webinar. Click on it. 
And it's actually part of this grouping of confirmation messages. The, all these appointment types are sending the exact same confirmation message. You can select, you can select next to the webinar, uh, your webinar, and select to say, well, I want to, I want a totally different, create a new template for this. If I want a different confirmation template, that's an option. Uh, so for example, I'm not gonna do that right now, but if I did that, it would start a new template. And then um, you could change the subject line. Okay. If you do like percentage type percentage, what does that do? That's just a code for saying, hey, let the subject line be the, the name of the appointment type. In this case, it would be Gregory's Awesome Webinar is how it, it would show up. It's a mail merge type thing. Okay, it would say Gregory's Awesome Webinar. If you do percentage type percentage for right here in Acuity. And then percentage time percentage is, well, what's the date and time in their time zone, in their time zone. So I basically put the dash dash in between just to, so literally this is the example. If this was, if this was the appointment type, it'll show up as like, like that, dash dash, and then, the, and then the actual date. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's the email subject line. You would adjust that. And then down here, you would adjust the actual message. Hi, percentage first percentage would be, hi, George, or hi, Gregory, or hi, Bob, or whatever. Your appointment has been scheduled, duration. And you want to see all the, what are all the percentage things I could do. You can click on insert field, and then it'll, it'll show you what these, all these things are, you know, um, duration and, and, you know, whatever. Okay. That's, that's the insert field uh, button. So anyway, uh, any, any questions about this? Thank you so much. Just one very simple one. And I can yeah. see there'll be a learning curve, even though you've laid it out very uh, clearly. Um, uh, when, since the link, the Zoom link is included in this, mm -hmm. um, is, it only, is the Zoom link only accessed once someone has registered? I, I, I just want to- How do you set that. up the Zoom link? So you have to set up the Zoom link first. Right. You, you set up the Zoom link. And then you, you put you put the URL and put it in the confirmation message. Got it. It's in the confirmation message. So they only see it after they've registered. Correct. Yeah. Just just yeah. trying to be yeah, totally. And then and then make sure you click on reminders on the left. And then Acuity gives you option for three reminders at whatever time interval. I think they have some default time intervals. And you could choose uh, the time interval. You could say, well, I want my my third reminder, my my earliest reminder to be. Uh, 168 hours is one week exactly. You know, you could do it for like 72 hours or however many hours beforehand. Um, and so you want to, you want to, you want to basically do the same thing for each a reminder. Uh, you could basically again search, search, um, search your, search your thing, and then it's part of this reminder group and email subject line and um, you know confirmation message or the reminder message, and then click on the second one you know, and, and, and do this. And if you want to say, uh, I don't really need three reminders for them, just need two reminders or whatever, two reminders is probably a good idea. Then you can click on disable this reminder, but just be sure to know that when you, when you click on disable this reminder, it'll disable it for every, all of your appointment types. So if you want to like say, well, I don't want to disable this reminder for all my appointment types, just, just for this webinar, you can click on this uh, Gregory's awesome webinar, choose the reminder type, and then scroll all the way to the bottom and click on inactive types. That means, what does that mean? And click save changes. That means, ah, the second reminder, this one will not show, will not happen for all of these inactive types. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and then of course there's a third reminder. So each reminder can have different messages, different subject email and uh, email subject and email and, and body. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your clarity. Appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Thanks so much.